Hello. Today let's look at this program. There's a planet and a star field and we can um, imagine we're in a ship and we're moving toward the planet. And I'm doing this by pushing the up arrow key and then the down arrow key zooms out. And uh, let's learn about this. This is in Pi Game. And uh, the artwork comes from here. It's uh, licensed with the Creative Commons Attribution License, which means you can use it um, without having to pay or anything. You just need to give credit to the artist. Here's the planet picture. And then there are two Python modules. This is the main one, planet.py, and then there's stars.py that makes the star field. So let's look at how this works. Now here, um, so we're, we're importing Pygame and then some Pygame constants. And then from the stars module, we're importing a, a function called draw field. Here we're um, taking the Pygame module and, and storing it in the shorter variable called PG. And the Pygame display, we're storing that in PD. It just makes it a little bit shorter uh, instead of having to type Pygame and Pygame.display in all these places. Um, so here's the Pi game init, and here we set the caption. This sets the keyboard repeat rate, so you can hold down the arrow key and you'll just uh, zoom in on the planet. And this creates the screen at these dimensions, which with the title fits pretty well into uh, 720p type of format, which is the size you're looking at now. And then we get the screen rectangle and save it, and we load the planet image. And we copy the screen surface into a new variable called star field. And then we draw onto the star field, the stars. Um, you'll see why we do that a little bit later. We create a clock, which is used for timing the frames of animation. And we choose an initial size for the planet, which is 1 20th of the width of the screen. And we choose the increment, uh, the amount by which we increase and decrease the size of the planet when we press the up, up and down arrow keys. And then we have variables um, image changed, which helps us not do unnecessary drawing, and keep running, which keeps this main loop going and makes it stop. Here we have the usual event handling. We're getting all the events and processing them, and if there's a quit or an escape key press, then we set the flag to false so that the loop will stop. Otherwise, if it's a key down event, meaning a key on the keyboard was pressed down, then we look at what type of, what key it was, and if it was the up arrow key, then we increase the planet size and set the flag to indicate that, we, that the image must be redrawn. Otherwise, if it's a down arrow key and we have uh, room to decrease the planet size value, then we do. And, uh, also set this flag. Now if the image has changed, then we need to blit the star field onto the screen. And that has the effect of clearing the screen. Let's say we've zoomed in, so the planet's bigger now. We need to um, um, erase. Actually, in that case, you wouldn't really have to erase because the planet's bigger. But imagine we're making the planet smaller, then you have to erase the bigger version of the planet that, that came before. And now we scale the planet using this uh, Pygame transform scale. And we say the size we want it to be. And then we set the x and y coordinates of the top left corner of the rectangle surrounding the planet by using the center of the screen rectangle. And from that, subtracting half the planet width and height. Uh, it's this rectangle surrounding the planet is a square, so these are the same. And then we blit the planet into place and then do the Pygame dot display dot flip to present the image to the on the screen and then we reset this flag and we do the clock dot tick so it's not likely we'll get 100 frames per second but this is what we're we're asking for so if if the user is not pressing the up and down arrow keys and then nothing's happening and we don't want to just spin through this loop super fast and burn up all the cpu cycles so at least here we uh, delay it and then we quit, and that's the end of it. So let me run it one more time. There it is. 
and zooming in and so forth. Oh, I'll show you briefly how the stars are made. That's here. Um, so we're, they're chosen randomly, and Randint gives you a uniform random distribution, and Gauss gives you a Gaussian or a normal random distribution of random numbers. And um, that just makes it a little bit easier to say that, um, for example, most of the circles that are used to draw the stars have a radius of 1. And um, this other one here means the standard deviation. And it's just it's an easy way to control so that most of the stars are the same size, but there is some, some uh, deviation. Um, what else? This blanks the star field, fills it with black. And then f about 500 stars. We choose the grayscale amount and then set these three variables here. Some of the stars are look a little bit blue or red or yellow. And um, I don't know how uh, accurate that is, but when I look in the sky, I see some, some red and blue and yellow stars. So I thought I'd try to do that here. And here we choose a random number from 1 to 10. And, um, and if it's a 1, so that means 1 out of 10 stars on average will be a little bit bluer. Same thing for red and same thing for yellow. Um, to make the yellow, we, we add to the red and the green. Then we draw, the, draw a circle on the star field, uh, red, green, and blue. So they all, ha they all have at least the gray amount, and then there may be a, a red boost or a green boost or a blue boost. And this is the location of the star, and then this is the radius of the circle. So there, I think you've seen it all. So long.